We developed and conducted an intensive two-week upper endoscopy course for novice first-year trainees. Our course was designed using a systematic stepwise framework with online modules, small group activities, peer instruction, and assessment and feedback. The objective of this video is to show our process for teaching upper endoscopy to novice trainees using a robust simulator-based training course. We include video recordings that highlight the confidence the trainees gained after this experience. Endoscopy education today principally occurs in the endoscopy unit, wherein trainees learn based on the apprenticeship model, on patients rather than on simulation models. Recent studies have shown that the competency to perform basic skills are acquired only after a long training period. The extended learning period potentially exposes the patient to inefficient and ineffective or even high-risk care and creates significant disparities in the access and quality of endoscopy training. Based on our recent experience, simulator-based education has significant potential to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of endoscopy training. We enrolled a total of six fellows with no prior endoscopy experience into our intensive upper endoscopy training course. Two fellows were from the University of California, San Francisco, two were from California Pacific Medical Center, and two were from Singapore General Hospital. We conducted the course simultaneously at the San Francisco VA Medical Center and Singapore General Hospital. Our curriculum covered fundamental endoscopy elements, including scope handling, standardized EGD, and biopsy, as well as advanced endoscopic techniques, such as polypectomy, dilation, clipping, electrocautery, band ligation, and hemostasis. For each topic, the trainees were required to complete assigned readings and assessments, attend hands-on sessions and practice with the simulator models, and then pass the minimum standards for competency before proceeding to the next topic. To begin, we deconstructed upper endoscopy into its elemental components. First, we wanted the fellows to master their scope handling technique by practicing endoscope tip control activities on a simulator. Then the trainees learned how to perform thorough EGD examinations on a simulator model. After achieving competency in scope handling and standard EGD, the fellows were taught endoscopic therapies including biopsy, clipping, balloon dilation, polypectomy, and hemostasis. For a trainee who has never used an endoscope before, it is very important that the endoscope maneuvers become second nature. To help achieve this, we used a tip control simulator that allowed the trainees to hone their confidence in using the endoscope using the all fingers technique. We focused on training them to utilize only one hand to control the endoscope knobs so that the other hand can be used freely for more advanced techniques and therapies. The use of their third and fourth fingers to control the endoscope knobs was highly emphasized. The trainees were required to go through the letters on the bowl in a sequential fashion while using the all fingers technique. We evaluated their progress by measuring their times to complete the maneuvers from A through Z. Once the trainee is able to consistently complete the activity under 100 seconds, they are able to move on to the next phase of the course. We set the minimum competency standard to be a 100 second completion rate based on the speed of expert endoscopists in a prior study. Next, we taught the fellows how to perform a standard EGD using simulator-based practice. We deconstructed the skill further to ensure that the examination is performed safely and that each anatomical region is assessed thoroughly. The fellows were first taught how to properly intubate a patient under various conditions. They were expected to maintain neutral position and recognize anatomical orientation depending on the patient's position. Once they passed the competency standard for intubation, the trainees practiced how to withdraw the endoscope and thoroughly examine the mucosa. They were instructed to perform every exam in a systematic, stepwise fashion, focusing on achieving circumferential movements for a complete view of the area. The use of model simulators offers the advantage of isolating certain movements and the ability to practice them over and over again. Such opportunities may not be available in real patients due to patient safety or simply due to time. For example, in this video, you can see that the trainee is able to practice retroflexion repeatedly until the maneuver becomes second nature. After meeting simulator-based competency metrics for standardized EGD, the trainees then learned therapeutic endoscopy, 
We used hybrid simulators with interchangeable parts to simulate various clinical presentations. We taught the fellows endoscopic therapies such as biopsy, clipping, electrocautery, polypectomy, balloon dilation, band ligation, and hemostasis. <laughs> to summarize, we designed and facilitated an endoscopy training course for first-year trainees with no prior endoscopy experience. As seen in these videos and based on our post-course surveys, the trainees were confident in their skills and felt that the course helped them perform endoscopy in patient settings. Our preliminary results suggest that such a course can be useful in enhancing the current state of endoscopy training.